evening, my friends. Uh, welcome, for those of you who are joining us in person, to the Ron Houston Center for Performing Arts. We're in the studio theater tonight. Uh, and for those of you who are joining us at home uh, at a long distance, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this evening, as part of our Missouri Arts Council grant, uh, as well as with sponsorship from the College of Arts and Sciences, we are welcoming Nathan Bowman and Elizabeth Bowman, the directors of and founding founders of the Kansas City Public Theater, uh, who are presenting a workshop for us. We have some sort of active on-screen uh, performers as well as some participants here in the audience. And you're certainly welcome to uh, get up and play along at home. You can do the home game if you want to. Uh, but tonight's workshop centers around the work of Tadashi Suzuki and Ann Bogart, who developed the Suzuki and Viewpoints movement method. So they're going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing and what you're going to see. Uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. So thank you guys so much for being with us. Thanks for having us. Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm Nathan. I'm Elizabeth. I'm a little woozy. So I am going to be narrating tonight, but I promise you I can do this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> I naturally laugh that loud, just so you know. Uh, so yeah, so tonight uh, we're going to be uh, demonstrating with uh, your peers up here who've been so kind uh, to join us tonight. By the way, they've never, to my knowledge, not too many of you have done this kind of training before, so it's really incredible that they're up here uh, doing this with us tonight. So um, they're going to be learning uh, this as we go along, just like all of you are. Um, so this, yeah, we're going to be walking through the Suzuki Viewpoints uh, method of actor training. Um, so yeah, basically what this training is, it's a very physically rigorous training method that was developed actually as two separate methods uh, by two different theater directors. Uh, the first one being Tadashi Suzuki, um, who developed his Suzuki method while he was directing in Japan. And then over here in the United States, you have Ann Bogart, who developed the Viewpoints uh, style of acting um, by developing um, an already existing method of, of viewpoints training that was mostly utilized for like experimental ballet and stuff like that. So both of them very movement-oriented pieces of training. Um, so most of them very different in styles of, of acting than perhaps you're familiar with. Um, but yeah, did you have anything? You want yeah, to I think started? like you talked about how different they are, but really they work in tandem really well. And something that we'll point out as we train is like, what, it, what is this good for? Why would I ever use it? It doesn't look like acting that I'm going to be using on stage very often. Um, and we'll talk about the reasons why. It's mostly, a lot of what you're gonna see is a training. So this is like, you train with Stanislavski method. This is also a similar idea. Um, what else? The idea being um, what you're going to, the training you're going to see tonight, you would not necessarily see somebody who trains in this style doing this on stage. However, I always use the analogy of um, if you're a sports player, right? If you're a basketball player, you might go to the gym to work out, but the act of playing basketball is not working out, right? What we're really seeing here tonight is a method of training the actor's instrument so that they can be theatrical. And it really is about how to bring theatricality into the body. Mm -hmm. And so the first section of the training, some of it might look silly. Uh, you might think this is kind of an odd exercise for acting. This first section of the training, really what Suzuki would say is that this is actually um, a style of vocal training. Because at its core, what you're about to see in just a minute, what we're going to be doing is a series of exercises. We're going to try to introduce you all to about half of Suzuki's basic exercises tonight. And so what you're going to see is a series of exercises that are meant to, one, ground us, creating a relationship to the ground, which then powers our breath. And so the idea is that it is our relationship to our ground, our footing, which powers our breath, which then gives us a theatrical voice. So just as you're about, you know, thinking about what you're seeing and why we're doing it, um, we'll try to explain along the way, but that's kind of the idea. Yeah, and then with viewpoints, a major part of viewpoints is um, the vocabulary. So being able to be on the same page with other actors when you talk about what we'll get to with things about um, time and space and how you move your body with one another even. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another part of it too. So it's very body oriented. Yeah. So we can, we're going to quit talking now. Yeah. Part of this training is that it's actually very, we, we, we talk very minimally when we're doing this training and we kind of just do. 
And so that's what we're going to do is we're just going to get right started. So if all of you could kind of stagger yourself, some people being a little bit more downstage, some people being a little bit more upstage, perfect. So we're going to do a couple of um, just warm up exercises just to get our legs a little warmed up before we jump into the first exercise, okay? So what I'd like us to do is I would like us to put our heels together and our toes apart. And I'd like us just to face the audience, shake those shoulders a little bit. You want to have an upper, you're going to feel a lot of tension. You're going to be doing a lot of work with your lower body, but we want to keep that upper body nice and comfortable and relaxed, okay? Um, if you're like me, I always get super bad tension in my right shoulder when I do this, and my training coaches always have to say, loosen up that shoulder. So I still have these problems, but we want to keep it as, as loose up here as possible. You want your hands to kind of be in half fists. A lot of this training was actually developed um, kind of out of a lot of Japanese sword style. So the idea being that you'd be holding on actual swords doing this. We're not using actual, we're not using swords. <laughs> but you want, imagine that, but you, want, you don't want to be squeezing it. You just want to have a light hold on it, okay? So heels together, toes apart, facing outward. And then we are going to go down into um, a plie, if you're familiar with ballet, on a count of 10. So just follow me, okay? Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, you should be here. If your heels came apart, that's fine. Um, what you want, you don't need to be as low as you can possibly get, okay? You want your tailbone and your sternum to be in a straight line or as much as possible, okay? Our source of breath for our vocal control is our core. We need to have our core controlled at all times. If we're sticking our tailbone out, now I'm, I'm, I'm crushing my core. I don't have good breath support. But here, I have good breath support. So we want to go down as much as you can while keeping that tailbone underneath you. So you might find that that means you're not going down as far as you can. Okay? So here we are. We're going to come back up in 10. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Now we're going to do the same thing in five. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five. And up in five. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to do it in three. Here we go. One, two, three, and up. One, two, three. Now I'm going to face you for this next one so I can watch you. Heels together, toes apart. Make sure your heels are touching. Um, do you mind snapping that for us? So typically when we train, we use the percussiveness of this kind of sword. Um, I'll give you an example first. So if you just want to watch me, here's, uh, we're going to do it on one count. It's going to go something like this whenever you're ready. There we go. We're not doing statues. <laughs> okay, so, um, so basically, um, on the snap, we're going to go down, and then on the snap, we're going to go up. Okay? Here we go. Together now. Perfect. One more time. Beautiful. Good job. Now let's uh, have our feet shoulder, a little past shoulder width apart. Okay, good. Awesome. I like mine right around here. Okay, a little past shoulder width apart. Out on this first one, you're probably going to find you're going to want to adjust yourself, probably. You're going to learn a lot about your body right now. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is same thing. We're going to go down in 10 this time. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And up in 10. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine, ten. Great. Adjust how you need to now that you know how that feels. Adjust what you need to adjust for that tailbone to stay underneath it. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to do that in five. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five. And up. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Let's do it in three. Here we go. One, two, three. And up. One, two, three. Now, if Elizabeth wants to snap that for us, we're going to go down as quickly as you can. Here we go. 
One more time, please. Great. Shake it out. How you feeling? Muscles kind of warmed up? Okay, so in Suzuki training, uh, the, most, the most important uh, single movement is what's called the stomp, okay? The stomp, uh, and so that's what I'm gonna teach us. I'm gonna teach us an exercise called stomping in shakyahachi. Shakyahachi is a style of flute playing. I'll explain that in a minute, maybe. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> so um, what I want us to do is I would like us to put our toes and heels together. Perfect. Yeah, I want you to put your toes and heels together. Nice and loose upper bodies. Half, you know, half little hands here. Perfect. Okay, and I want you to have a slight bend in your knee. Slight bend in your knee. That engages the muscles. We always want our muscles engaged. Okay, so uh, when I clap, what I want you to do as best as you can, it's kind of a balancing act. It, it's your core, it's all about your core, right? So this is what's gonna give you control. So when I clap, I just want you to give your knee a good lift, okay? Now, if you're familiar with ballet, I'm gonna teach you to break every ballet rule you've ever had. Don't point your toe, make, it not, make that bottom of the foot nice and horizontal to the ground, keep your leg as horizontal with the ground as possible as well, okay? You want like a 90 degree angle? Yeah, yeah. So when I clap, I want you to li just lift that right knee up. Here we go, oh! Perfect. Yep, try to keep those hands down if you can. And I know I'm talking, and so it makes you all wanna look at me, but try to have a hard focus right in front of you. You wanna have a hard focus, okay? When I clap, I want you to set that foot right back down. Oh! Perfect, okay. Let's do it with the left foot now. Here we go, and oh! Great. Let's set that foot down. Oh. Great. Let's try it with the right foot. Oh. Okay, now you might feel yourself leaning over. Get that tailbone underneath you. Straighten up. Straighten up. There we go. Let's put that foot down. Oh. And the left one. Oh. And down. Now you're hearing something. You're hearing a little bit of percussiveness in the air, right? Yeah. So now when you put that foot down, we're gonna, when I clap, I want it to go up and down in a single move, movement. And I want you to come down on that foot nice and flat. And I want you to give us a nice little bit of percussiveness when you set that down, okay? Here we go. Don't come down straight on your heel, though, or the ball of your foot. Nice flat foot bottom, okay? Here we go. Right leg up and down. And up. Oh! Perfect. Now, what I just saw was a lot of really great stomping, but the upper bodies went a little haywire when we did that, okay? So when we do that, we want a nice bend of the knee, straight, and... You know, we want to keep this whole thing intact, right? Let's try it again. Here we go. Let's do it with the left leg this time. Up and down. Here we go. Hup! Okay. And the right. Hup! And the left. Hup! Okay, perfect. Now, here's another thing I'm seeing. Nice bend in the knee. Ah, right? We're straightening ourselves. Okay. So we want to keep that knee bent. When we straighten, we're putting strain on our knees that we don't want to put there, right? So let's try that again. Try to keep the bend in your leg, okay? Let's try it with the left leg up and down this time. So we're making sure that right leg stays nice and bent, okay? Here we go, and hup! Okay, good, and hup! 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 Perfect, that's great. Shake it out, good job. Okay, so now, I'm going to teach you the second part of the stomping exercise, which is called shakuhachi. It's called that because there's a certain style of music that we do this exercise to. It's a style of, uh, of slow flute playing. Can you bring us in about halfway through that stomping shakuhachi track just so they can hear um, what the flute music is? hearing it a little bit. There we go. It's very slow, okay? Let's just listen to it for a moment so we know what we're getting ourselves into. Okay. Now, if you want to, within your space, I want you to keep those knees bent, look straight ahead, and I want you to move forward very slowly. Heel to toe, 
Try to keep your core consistently moving through space. We don't want to wobble up and down, but have a hard focus in front of you. Nice and slow. You should have perfect control over what your body's doing. Heel to toe. Heel touches first, then toe. Hard focus right in front of you. Okay, good. So can you take us to the beginning of the track? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stomp for three minutes, um, whatever you're comfortable with doing in your space. You can stomp in place. You can kind of work your way in your lane, stay in your lanes though. Um, so we're, say roughly through the center of your lane because we have a really good space apart. So the way this exercise goes is we're going to stomp pretty vigorously for three minutes. What this is going to do is you're gonna feel a lot of tension under here. We have a lot of, we have a lot of, we have a crisis going down here, which is creating a bunch of tension up here. But we have to control, we have to keep this nice and loose while we're generating crisis below us, right? I mean, this is like drama in the body, basically, okay? We're gonna be stomping pretty vigorously, getting that heartbeat up, getting that breath going for three minutes. Then that music's gonna play. Once, the, once that music starts, or I should say once the stomping music stops, we're gonna collapse to the ground which we'll practice in a moment. Then you rise and do that very walk that you just did, okay? So, um, can we play the beginning of it so that they can hear the kind of music they're gonna be stomping to? It sounds fairly silly, but it's not so silly when you, when you are trying to keep up with it in a good stomp. Let's give ourselves a good 30 seconds of practicing with it. When it starts off, just watch me. There's a cue for when we bend the knee and then start stomping. So as soon as that starts playing, You'll follow me and you'll learn the cue pretty quickly. Here we go. Bend. Stop. Okay, you can stop it. So now we have an idea. When that music stops after three minutes, we're gonna collapse to the ground and then we're gonna slowly rise. I'll give you an example. So say the music's done. I collapse. And then I'm trying to get myself off the ground with my breath supported as slowly and in control of a manner as possible without using my arms if I can. So I'm just very slowly, get my footing and rise and then walk to the audience. So what that's doing for our breath is we were, we're going, we're going, we're going, then we have to take it back, get control of our breath, and slow down our, our, and completely take it down to a completely different tempo than what we're working on, right? That's the idea, that's what our breath is doing and how we have to control it. So let's practice our collapse first, okay? Just on your own time, just practice falling to the ground, safely and getting yourself up in a way that minimizes your use of your arms. Just take a moment. If you're participating out here, you can too. Just take a moment to practice a little bit before we actually do this. Whenever you want, just, just feel free to start falling. <laughs> And you want to make sure you're coming up nice and slow. We never want to let momentum take over. We want our muscles engaged the entire time. We don't want to have to throw our body up, okay? And we want to do it, we want to have it nice and slow. We want to get up as slowly as possible. That's a pretty good tempo right there that you're going at, that, that, slow, that slowness, that was pretty good. We want to go from as, as hyped of a tempo as possible to as slow as a tempo of, as possible. And if you're going too slow, I'll let you know. That's the general idea. I'm just gonna throw you all into this though, okay? This is where, this is the toughest exercise we're gonna do. 
by about halfway through this stomping, you're going to wonder, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> you're going to wonder, why was I born? Why am I on this earth? All these questions are going to be going through your mind as you're doing this. Be safe. You know your body's better than we do, but I encourage you to try to push through it. I've never had a problem with anybody who's done this for the first time pushing through it before, so I'm not trying to freak you out or anything, but you know, just, just be safe and do what you can. So let's start the stomping shakyahachi um, whenever we're ready, and we're just going to do it. Follow me. I might come within six feet of you and maybe shout some adjustments at you, um, particularly this group up here since you're the ones uh, that I'm really working with right now. So yeah, whenever we're ready, let's just do this thing. This is called stomping shakuhachi. Bend, stomp. Getting those knees up if you can. Yeah, chest up. Don't collapse your breath. Keep this nice and elevated. starts, slow your breath, get control of your breath, get your footing and your grounding underneath your core. If at any point you're in this, you should be able to stop and, oh my childhood, my innocent childhood, happiness awoke with me every morning, it was just like this, nothing has changed, all, all white. That's the idea. Then you turn, take in your audience, hard focus, heel to toe. Nice control over that upper body. Don't let it get too lazy. Relaxed doesn't mean lazy. We still want to have perfect control, though we are relaxed in our upper bodies.
get about a few feet from the audience first row. Just bring your feet together to a starting position. Just keep that hard focus. We can pause the music. Keep your focus, keep your patience, keep your focus good. On the snap, speak. Oh my gosh, this is my goodness childhood. Have been so long with me that every morning it was just like this. Nothing has changed. All, all white. After the dark and the autumn and the cold, cold winter, we are young again and full of happiness. The angels of heaven have not given you. Oh, if only I could free my neck and shoulders from the stone that weighs them down. If only I could break my past. Perfect. If you want word perfect, that's fine. I just put you through your first stomping exercise, so it's totally fine if you want to revert it. Relax. Relax. Shake it off. How'd that feel? <laughs> Sweaty. Good job, everyone. Round of applause, please. That was great. Thank you. Really good job. Really good job. You all doing okay? Yeah. You feeling okay? Yeah? How are your legs feeling? Woo! What's that? <laughs> yeah. The first time we do that, that's always rough. Fortunately for you, I'm not going to make us do the normal thing, which is do it immediately after we did it the first time. We don't have enough time for that, but typically uh, when we're training, you know, we do it and then we do it again. <laughs> and you think you can't do it, but it's actually easier the second time, believe it or not. Um, because we did that. Yeah. Um, speaking of everything else, let's go ahead and get to, um, if we want to stagger ourselves back out again. So that was stomping shakyahachi, okay? So I know all of you were participating out there. So you probably felt the difference, and you can maybe speak to this as well. There's certainly a difference in our body's breath and how we control it going immediately from the to the, right? I mean, that's a very drastic shift in the way we control our bodies, right? But as performers, we have to be able to do that on stage, right? We have to be able to make those drastic shifts with how we control our breath and have perfect control over it, right? Whether you're doing a musical, whether you're doing Shakespeare, whether you're doing God Help Me, Neil Simon. <laughs> um, we need to have that sort of control. Okay, so what we're going to do now is a series, I'm going to teach you a series of forms, maybe called choreography, um, that's going to just give us a few different ways of thinking about the way we have our foot footing to the ground. What's important here is uh, your feet are going to be, again, your lower body is going to be doing a lot of different things. For this next portion of the exercise, what I want you to focus on is keeping this upper body nice and elongated. We don't want to collapse our breath. We, want to, we don't want to collapse our neck. I'm especially bad at collapsing my neck. I always get really intense. I get my neck down like that. and it's, We don't want to do that, OK? So you want to keep a nice, elongated, but relaxed upper body with that tailbone underneath us while we're doing the series of exercises that Mubuki teach us, OK? Um, by the way, uh, I just taught you stomping shakyahachi. In Suzuki training, that would also be referred to as basic one, if you're curious about the vocabulary. There, there are six basic routines, of which I'm teaching you three of them tonight, basically. So, okay, we're here. So let's go ahead and start off in that, in that plie position, or in, in, the, in first position, but we're gonna be doing a semi-plie. So we want a nice little, not just a subtle bend in the knee, but we want the heels together, toes apart with a good, nice little bend right there. Yeah, okay, perfect. So, uh, what I'm gonna have us do is this is a four step movement. I'll teach us all, um, I'll teach us the four steps first, okay? So step number one is a little side stomp. Now when you do this, you don't wanna be overreaching. Really, and I see I, that was actually a really bad stomp on my part. Um, what I want is my heel with my groin to my sternum, up through my spine and my chin. This should be as good of a straight line as possible, okay? So all your weight in this position your foot should be directly to the side of you. So you want to move your foot back a little bit so it's directly, in, uh, directly to the side. You want your foot directly to the side, and you want it to be a nice straight line. So most of your weight should be on this right foot, OK? And your other leg should be completely straight. Now, you also don't have to over stomp this either because you need, it to, you need your foot to be underneath you. Sometimes we have a tendency to over stomp. But then if this foot happens to come off the ground, I'm done for, right? So we just want it right underneath us taking our weight so that I'm just kind of free right here. And everybody's body's differently, so where you strike this balance is going to be a little bit different for everybody. So really feel out your body, feel like, you know, feel out what it wants to do. 
But step number one, as I said, just a nice little picture of there being just a little box next to you that you have to step over. So just a nice little one. Perfect. Two, your foot stays on the ground, but you just slide it back to your starting position. Two, three is a drop to the ground. Three, and four is just right back up. Four, perfect. Then we start back over with one, but to the other side, so to the left. One, two, three, four, to the right. One, two, three, four, to the left now. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Now, when your hands are down, um, something, just keep in mind, always keep, use this as your image. They want to be kind of out like this. You don't want them here because, you know, I'm stabbing myself, right? <laughs> so you want them out here, your hands to the side like that. Okay. Um, let's do it again. But this time, uh, just so that I think this is actually a little bit easier with regard to getting our, our footing here. As opposed to stomping, let's just use our center and shove that foot over. Does that make sense? Because it's all about keeping our center as our center, okay? So don't think of it as your foot moving. Think of it as your hips, as your core moving. You're here, yes. This is just gonna shove that foot right over. Yeah, I'm already seeing a big difference that that's making. So let's take it back from the beginning, okay? We're gonna do uh, to the right, but now we're sliding rather than stomping. So heels and toes together, knees bent. Okay, when I, when on my, when I say one, just slide that thing to the right. Here we go, one. Make sure your other leg is straight. Your left leg should be straight right now. Two, just bring your left leg in, good, good. Knees still bent. Keep that good bend in your knees. Three, straight down, three. Right back up, four. Perfect, now we're doing it to the left, so sliding it, here we go. Uh, knees bent. To the left now, one. Two, three, four, good. Did sliding it help you find that center a little bit more? I find that it does. We tend to overcompensate a lot when we're stomping. So when you just kind of slide that foot over, I think that's really nice. So for now, I think let's just stick with the sliding. Let's just stick with the sliding motion because I think that's going to help us center ourselves a little bit more. So now I might play a little bit with us, okay? I might, those are the steps. But I might say, let's take step two in a five count. And I might have us do things like that, okay? So just, uh, yeah, let's just try our best. Here we go. Toes apart, knees to, uh, heels together, knees bent. We're gonna slide that foot to the right. Here we go, one. Make sure that left leg is straight. Good, center yourselves, get, that, get your center over your heel. Okay. Two, three. Four, one, now I want us to do two in a five count. Here we go, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's go back to for the first position. Because that's where I notice that a lot of what's happening is when we're doing this, our core either sinks or elevates to a different level. And when we're doing this, we're rising, our, we're raising ourselves a little bit. But we want this to stay on the same plane horizontally. Okay, does that make sense? So, yeah, so let's do it again. And you'll really be able to feel it when you, um, oh, I'm just gonna quit talking. Let's get back into the position. Heels together, toes apart, good. Uh, let's take it to the right again, sliding that foot to the right. Here we go, one, and two, three, four. Left foot now, one. Stay where you are on a five count. I want you to shift that weight over to your right foot. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's where I saw the arc, where we're doing this. We're going, whoa, okay, no. We, we need it to be nice and level, okay? Keep that core in control. So uh, back to your first positions. Let's go to the left. Uh, remember, knees bent, always bending our knees. Sliding it to the left, here we go. One, now on a five count, we're gonna take it right back over to the right. One, two, 
three, four, five. Now on a five count, we're gonna shift that weight back over to the left leg. Here we go, one, two, three, four, five. Good. Now on a three count, I want us to take it to the other leg. Here we go, one, two, three. Take it back, one, two, three. Now, when I snap, I, if we're on one leg, I just want us to make a very quick shift, okay? I'm just gonna do it on the clap, here we go. Shift to the other leg. Other. The other. Perfect. Shake it out. Good job. Good job. How's, how, you, how are your legs feeling? Okay. This next one's a little tougher, okay? So what we just did is called basic 3A. That's just the name of it. This segment has a section, has a 3A, a 3B, and a 3C. That movement, that one, two, three, four, that we just dabbled with is 3A. Now we're gonna do 3B, okay? Um, and this 3B actually has a, a, has a couple of variations. I'm gonna teach us a six part step, okay? Um, we're gonna get our upper body into it just a little bit. So step number one, so if for this one, you start off with your toes and heels together and your knees bent, of course. The first one is you kick your leg right out in front of you and pull it in and hold it. So one looks something like this. Okay, and then two is just a nice little stomp right back down, okay? Three, take that same right leg, you're gonna push it forward a little bit so that all your weight is on your right leg, okay? Four, you redistribute that weight to your back leg on your tiptoes. And then five is back down. And I lied, I'm just doing the five step movement for now. <laughs> I'll introduce the sixth one here in a moment if we have time. And then so then you start all over, but when you start over, your left leg has to come a little bit further. So one, perfect. Okay, let's set our feet down and start over. So this is another one of those things where if, you, if you've ever taken dance, we're breaking every rule. When we're doing this, we want our foot to come out and in. Flat foot out and in, nice horizontal to the floor, okay? So, yeah. I'm gonna walk, so I'm gonna walk us through it and I'm just gonna kinda see what you do, okay? Great, so uh, toes and heels together, knees slightly bent, hard focus in front of you. When I say one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick that right leg out, okay? Here we go, one. And then we're setting it down, two. Right next to your other foot. Yeah, straighten up right there, yep, feet together. When you come back down, you, yeah, right back down next foot, sure. Uh, let's take it back from the top again, perfect. Okay, so starting off with the right leg again, we're gonna kick it right out in front of us and pull it in. Here we go, one, two. Then we're taking that right foot and sliding it forward, three. Coming up on our toes, four, five is back down. Now we're here with the left foot. One, two, three, up four, five. Now with the right foot. One, two, three, four, five, one, speed. Two, three, four, five. Good. Let's relax. Shake it out. Good job. Yeah. How was that speaking? <laughs> when you're holding it up. Yeah. Not tough. Not 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 easy. Exactly. Okay. Now I'm gonna throw a kink into the whole thing and add an extra step to that last one for you. Okay. So now we're gonna go. We're gonna go one. Two, three, four is going to be using my opposite hand to, to point forward. So four is gonna be, then five is up, 
six is drop. And that, that's the difference, okay? Everything drops at six. Everything drops at six, okay? Now the point is something specific because the point is, is really an extension of our breath. So I don't want to do this. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm here, okay, I don't want to go whoop, and I don't want to go whoop. I think of it as pointing with your core, so it's sort of a and catch yourself, okay? You should feel it in your core when you stop that, when you stop that point, okay? So that's going to be our new step number four, which we're going to add to it, okay? And I might have you speak. Who knows? <laughs> okay, let's have our hard focus in front of us. Great. Have our hard focus in front of us. Knees bent, toes and heels together. Okay, so we're going to start off with our right leg. Here we go. One. Now we're going to go down. Two. Pushing that right foot forward. Three. Now with our left hand, we're going to point. Four. Now we're going to go up. Five. And now we're going to drop. Six. Now with the left leg. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Now with the right hand. Four. Speak. Oh, my childhood, my innocent childhood. Happy to be able to be every morning just like this. Nothing has changed all, all I like. After the darkness and the autumn and the cold, cold winter, you were young again, full of happiness. The angels of heaven are not abandoned you. Oh, if only I could sprain my neck and shoulders from the snow and the wind and down. If only I could get my past. Five. That's up. And we're dropping six. One, two, three. With the left hand. Four, five, six. One, two, three. With the right hand. Four, five, speak. Oh, my childhood, my innocent childhood. Happiness will be every morning, just like this. All things has changed. Oh, all right. After the darkness and the autumn and the cold, cold winter, you are really full of happiness. The angels of heaven have not abandoned you. If only I could wish, could tell them all the other ways we doubt. If only I could do my right best. Right and drop. Good job, everybody. Shake it out. Okay. How are your legs feeling? What legs? Yeah, pretty tired? Okay. So let's give our legs a break. Let's give our legs a little bit of a break and we're gonna have a bit of a seat, okay? We're gonna sit down. Okay. So the next exercise we're gonna do, so what we just did, we did th basic 3A and basic 3B. We're not gonna go, we're not gonna do basic 3C. It's, it's, it's pretty difficult and uh, we, don't have as, we don't have as much time as I'd like because there's so many different things. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is an exercise called statues. And uh, this is actually an exercise, I mean, as a company, Kansas City Public Theater, um, as a company, Kansas City Public Theater utilizes this training quite a bit, I would say. Um, but this, this next portion, these statues, are something that we use pretty often as an aesthetic technique as well. We, we have our actors kind of, at least in some of the stuff, you know, um, we think about posing actors and stuff like that. We kind of use this statue work to kind of look at that. So um, I think for now I'm going to have us do what's called freestyle, meaning that we can make whatever statues we want. Um, there, are, there, is, there are specific statue forms that we learn usually. For now, we're going to do what's called freestyle. So basic position is we're going to be like this. Just get your knees, you know, as tucked in as you can, heels and to heels and toes together, your heads are down. And then um, if you just want to watch me for a second, just so you can get an idea of what we're doing, uh, do you want to snap? Okay. You can just watch me just to get an idea of what it's going to look like, and I hope this mic pack stays in. <laughs> um, let me actually, I think it'll be fine. Okay. I'm just going to set it on the ground next to me. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. So, there are a couple of basic rules with statues. Basically, you, know, you can't let your feet touch the ground. So this is kind of 
Everybody's learning their own body here. Everybody's point of balance is different, but your balance is always going to be your core. Okay? Um, you always want your core to be in good control so that theoretically, if I'm here, um, anytime Elizabeth could ask me to speak and I'd have to speak, and I need to have good breath control for that, okay? Um, yeah, if you want to. So I would say specifically, Megan, speak. Oh, my childhood, my innocent childhood. Happiness awoke with me every morning. It was just like this. Nothing has changed. All, all white. After the dark, dismal autumn and the cold, cold winter, you are young again, full of happiness. The angels of heaven have not abandoned you. Oh, if only I could free my neck and shoulders from the stone that weighs them down. If only I could forget my past. Something like that. Okay? Cool. Um, so that's what you're going to be doing. Make whatever statues you want. Be creative. Um, don't think about it too much. Just snap immediately. Okay? Cool. Um, so let's get into a base position. Pretty much the only rule, have that when you come up, make a hard focus on something, get, your, get those feet off the ground. Here we go. Freestyle. Here we go. Back. Speak. Oh, my childhood, my innocent childhood. How can this go with me every morning? It's just like this. Nothing has changed. All, all white. After the dark, this whole lot of the cold, cold winter, you are young again, full of happiness. Angels of heaven have not abandoned you. Oh, if only I could free my neck and shoulders from that stone that weighs them down. If only I could forget my past. That was really good. Here we go. Perfect. Relax. Good. Okay, perfect. Okay. Now, we're almost done with our Suzuki section. But there's one other thing I'd like to get in before we take a, a, a five minute break. Okay? So let's stand up and I'm gonna teach you standing statues real quick. Okay? We're going to freestyle, just like we just did, only your base position, and I'll demonstrate again for you. Our base position is going to be something like this. Comfort with your own body, get as low as you can comfortably. You don't have to, it's not a contest to see who can get as low to the ground as possible. What you're going to do is you're going to freestyle high, medium, low, high, medium, low, and cycle through them. It's freestyle, only rule, you gotta be up on your toes the whole time. When you're, not when you're up in your statue, when you're base, you're on your feet. So I'll demonstrate, and again, I could ask you to speak at any time, so when Elizabeth wants to start. Oh, my childhood, my innocent childhood. Happiness awoke with me every morning. It was just like this. Nothing has changed. All, all white. Yeah, something like that. Make sense? Back and forth. You go down. You go up. High statue. Medium statue. Low statue. If you, have a little, if you wave a little bit at one point, that's totally fine. You may have seen my first one. I wasn't quite prepared. And so I just kind of like, ooh, wavered a little bit. That's fine. I've been doing this for, you know, a little bit now, and, you know, I still mess up sometimes. It's totally fine. Let's get into our base positions. Feet apart, pretty, fell, pretty far apart, as much as you can. Knees nice and bent, heads down, arms to your side. Perfect. Yeah, as low as you can get. You all know you're no, it's not a contest to see who can get low. In fact, if you're too low, you might have a problem shooting up when you need to. So, here we go. High statues, and whoop. And back. Make sure we're on our tiptoes when we come up to statues. Heels off the ground. Medium statue. Whoop. Get those tailbones in. Somebody, some people are kind of sticking them out right there. We want to. Yep. There you go. Whoop. Low. Whoop. Back. We're going to go high again. Whoop. Speak. Oh, my childhood, my innocent childhood. Happiness is all to me every morning. It was just like this. Nothing has changed. All, all white. After the darkness and the cold, cold winter, you are 
Good job. Speed round a little bit at the end there. <laughs> yeah. What time are we at? 7.57. 7.57. Okay. So let's take a five minute break and then we'll come back just so you can all catch your breath, get a little drink of water. Uh, let's do exactly five minutes and come back into the second half of the workshop. Good job. Really. Good job, everybody. Really good job.
Hopefully that hopping. break was recuperative for you, you all. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Your legs feeling good? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So we're going to go ahead and get started again. Um, so yeah, speaking of, so Elizabeth was just talking um, to them kind of about the people who have been doing this for a very, very long time, like since the beginning. Mm -hmm. So the, the biggest school in this country, if you're interested in this acting method, Suzuki Viewpoints, you're about to learn the viewpoints half of it. Um, if you're interested in this acting method, um, the primary school that teaches this is called City Company, S-I-T-I. -I. That's where we both train. And um, they're the com that's the company that Suzuki and Ann Bogart actually started here in the United States. So it's kind of the home base for this method here in the United States. And so, yeah, many of the actors who really helped originate this style um, still work and teach there today well into their ages, you know, having started this company not too much older than all of you in the early 90s, and they're still doing it. And yeah, their legs are pretty ripped. <laughs> you can imagine. So the next part of this that we're going to do is called the viewpoints. Um, it's going to feel fairly different than what we were doing with Suzuki. Um, but after doing this for a while, oh, yes, thank you. I always forget this. Elizabeth just reminded me we need to take our socks off uh, for viewpoints. So. This is going to start off feeling, um, feeling a little bit different than what we were just doing. But the reason that these two directors really decided to get together to start a company is because they felt that these two styles really had a lot of ways of informing one another. So what we're going to be doing right now with this viewpoint uh, is you know, what we were previously working on was, uh, was grounding and breath control. right? So we don't want to forget that stuff. It informs what we're about to do, um, which is basically um, we're going to be breaking down movement into a series of tools, okay? And these tools can become both the director and the actor's friend when they're thinking about how to stage uh, a production or if you're an actor, how to, you know, creatively block yourself if you ever need to, basically. So we're going to be breaking down, um, we're going to try to break down all of the aspects of human movement into two basic categories, time and space, okay? So... That's it. And we're going to try to figure out how the body moves and what are, what are our tools of movement. So most importantly, um, every single person in this room is an object in space. Okay? We're going to start thinking about space just a little bit. We're all objects in space. Um, we have a certain distance from one another. Right now, distance is very important that we maintain from one another. And so what I want us to do is just explore our lanes up and down. Just walk through your lane, familiarize yourself with the space that you have to utilize, okay? So just take a minute and just explore this space. We're just developing a spatial awareness. And if you're at home or in the audience, you can utilize like a four foot by four foot square as well. Yeah. Yeah, how do you move through this space? Is it a straight line? Do you zigzag a little bit? What's your floor plan here, you know? How do, you, how do we walk through this space? Space is very limited right now. In an ordinary se se uh, setting, we might be interweaving, you know, we may, might be weaving within one another. But right now, we, we can't do that. So what, is this, what can you utilize in your space? How do we walk in space? What directions do we walk? What paths do we take?
you might notice that you're developing what's called a soft focus, which is you're aware of your surroundings. You, pro you, you, notice, you notice each other in your periphery. This isn't a hard focus. This is keeping our awareness around us. You might be focusing one place, but you can see the wall next to you. We're developing a soft focus. This allows us to have a better relationship with the space that we're utilizing. So feel free to, you don't have to keep your head facing straight. You can move around, move that head around. Don't feel like you have to, this hard focus like we were just doing it. We're softening our focus to the world around us, to the space around us. Now, as we're exploring this space, I want us to be doing this at a nice brisk walk. You're not running, but it's not casual. It's a you've got some place to be kind of walk. But there's a no run sign. Nice brisk walk. Okay. So now we're going to start thinking about tempo, the speed at which we move. We are going to call this five on a one to 10 scale. This is five. Nice brisk walk. You've got some place to be. Now stop. We're going to call this zero. OK? Zero is a tempo. And we don't want to forget that. Oftentimes, stillness on stage is just as powerful as movement. Oftentimes, more often than not, it is more powerful than movement. So we always want to consider zero. OK, so let's go back to five. Let's go back to zero. OK, perfect. Let's go back to five. And let's go back to zero. Now thinking of this scale from zero to 10 and knowing what your five is, when I clap, I want you to go at a one. Zero. One. Zero, five. One. Now that's drama right there. That, that sudden shift, that feels like something. I don't know what it feels like. They're just moving at different tempos, but it feels like something. Five. One. Those of you who are just watching, that felt like something. I don't know what it is. We're not playing with emotion. We're just focusing on the basic mechanics of movement. And emotion might just naturally arise out of that. Maybe it does. OK. Five. Nice, brisk walk. You don't have to, you know, it's, it's not too fast. This is just a, you got some place to be. You don't want to embarrass yourself, though, OK? You're just, you're, everybody around you needs to think that you're just kind of walking. But it's a nice, brisk walk. Now, safely and always keeping our spatial awareness, when I clap, I want you to show me an eight. One. Oftentimes, as actors, especially if we're not terribly experienced yet, we like to play in kind of a five range most of the time. But wow, is it cool to play with those. Audiences feel those extremes. So let's go to eight and zero. Yeah, yeah, we felt that. And five. Nice brisk walk. OK, perfect. So now we have 0, 1, 5, and 8 with regard to our tempo. OK? So now I just want you to explore your space. And I want you in your own time.
to just play with these tempos, OK? It is all up to you. You have 0, 1, 5, and 8. Explore them the way, any way you'd like to, keeping in mind your spatial awareness. Notice yourself getting into any patterns. Try to break it up a little bit. Try to surprise yourself. Try to surprise yourself. Try to, try to act intuitively. Try not to think about it. I know that's really hard to do because I'm giving you directions. It's a little paradoxical. But try to, we always say, get out of your head and just react. Constantly being aware. We're doing our own work, but we should always be aware of the people in the space with us. Let that inform our practice a little bit. Good. Now, we have tempos 0, 1, 5, and 8. Keep playing with those, but I want you to think about how long you are holding those tempos for, okay? This is what we call duration. This is another aspect of time. There's how fast we move, but then there's how long we're moving at that speed for. Maybe you're at a zero for a really long time. Maybe you're at an eight in really short bursts. I don't know. But we're not just thinking about tempo. We're thinking about the length of tempo, duration. And this is one where it's really easy to get comfortable. It's really easy to start getting into some patterns now. Try to surprise yourself a little bit. Oftentimes, we might just, you know, get kind of rhythmically start going through different durations, you know. And, you know, try to surprise yourself. Try to push yourself. Maybe you're, you know, maybe you're holding one tempo out for a little bit longer than maybe you want to, you know. Just always keep yourself on your toes. Always surprise yourself. React. Don't think. React. So we're thinking about tempo and duration. Keep playing. As we're playing with tempo and duration, I want you to start playing with the idea of starting what you're doing, stopping what you're doing, and changing what you're doing. Now, what do I mean by this? It, a big word for this is called kinesthetic response. Keep working while I'm talking. Again, paradoxical. But <laughs> um, this is what we call kinesthetic response. You're letting yourself only make a decision as an intuitive reaction to somebody else. So now while we're, we're doing solo work, but we're opening ourselves up to the room and the stimuli around us. If a, if a big, heavy stack of books dropped through the ceiling, we'd all probably jump and react, right? That's a kinesthetic response. As actors, we have to learn how to act intuitively to our circumstances. So what I want you to do right now, as you're playing with tempo and duration, try not to make a choice, but just react to your circumstances. Let other people inform, let the stimulus from, let, let all the stimuli around you, let this inform when you change what you're doing, when you start and stop.
it's at this point where our tempos can start getting a little blurry. Yeah. 0, 1, 5, and 8. Always, as I introduce new tools, keep going over that checklist in your head. What are the other tools? We never want those other tools to fade. 0, 1, 5, and 8. We want to make those choices distinct. As an actor, it's my ability to make distinct choices on stage that reads to an audience. So always keep, you have four choices of tempo. We're playing with duration. We're playing with that kinesthetic response. But never let that temp, you know, never let those other tools fade. Keep your choices distinct. Be bold. And very similar to kinesthetic response, that is, and reacting to your peers. You may not be, in, you know, may not be weaving within one another, but you can certainly, you're aware of what everybody else is doing. React to this. But you can also repeat what they're doing. That's another idea of tempo, is, is, is copying time, okay? You don't, maybe, maybe you are taking a cue from your peers' uh, floor plan. Maybe you're walking in the same direction as them. Maybe you're choosing to go at the same tempo as them. You can choose to repeat or copy what your peers are doing. And because you have a soft shoulder, make sure that they don't know that you are copying them. Yeah. That's a good point. Don't let them know. You have a soft focus. So now we're kind of working together a little bit. We're becoming an ensemble. We're still doing our individual work. We have our tempos, 0, 1, 5, and 8, duration. We're thinking about reacting intuitively to one another. And perhaps even taking cues and repeating or copying what one another are doing. We're becoming an ensemble right now using just the tools of time. So as we're playing with time, another tool that we're actually using already, that we've been using, uh, is called movement, which is really an idea of space, thinking about how we move our bodies through space. Right now, if you were to picture us, we're all pretty much straight lines, right? We're going to keep playing, but I want us to keep playing. Now we're going int to integrate some, some ideas of space into this, okay? So as you're moving, I want you to interact with your right arm a little bit. This is one of our six limbs. We have six limbs. We have two arms, we have two legs, we have our head, and we have our tailbone. Now as you're playing through space, I want you to think about how this limb is moving you through space. Never forgetting the rest of our tools, space. Maybe it leads you through space at a zero, a one, a five, or an eight. Maybe you're copying what somebody else is doing. Just let it lead you around. You don't know where your limb's going to go. Just let it, just let it take you. What tempo is your limb moving at? Ooh, that's a, ooh, that's tricky. I don't know, I don't know what tempo it's moving. Oh, I was moving this tempo. Who knows? I want you to drop that and get your left arm out. 
And let's just let's get let's work this limb a little bit. How does how does this limb go through space? How does this limb move you through space? Does it move you through space? Does it take you back through space? I don't know. Back up that checklist. Tempo one zero zero one five eight. Always, you know, reacting to one another. Maybe copying and repeating one another. Keep going back over that checklist. But you're just doing the same. But you're just letting your left arm lead you through space. That's all. Now, how about our right legs? How does this limb take us through space? How are your peers letting this limb take you through space? Always be aware of your surroundings. Now, how's your left leg take you through space? How does this limb move? Again, does it move at a zero? Does it move at a one? Does it move at an eight? I don't know. How long does it move at that tempo for? I don't know. Is it doing the same thing that somebody else in the room is doing? Is it getting any ideas from anybody else? How does your head move through space? I should really say, how does your head move through time? Because that's what we've been focusing on. How does your head move through tempo? How does your head move through duration? How is your head as a limb active in two, acting reactively, intuitively to the world around you? tailbone move through space? That one's kind of odd, right? How does, your, how does your tailbone move through space? How does it move through time? I want you to pick two limbs and continue working with both of them. Here we go. Just two. I don't want you to focus on the other four, just two. Which limbs are you using? And how are you moving through time? something, another part of space, when we were talking about spa spatial relationship we didn't talk about is, is our elevation. How low, how low are your limbs moving to the ground? Are your, are your limbs touching the ground? Are they as far away from the ground as possible? 
Are they sitting? Are they standing? Are they jumping? We have a lot of different levels of space we can play in. How high are these limbs moving? How low? What tempos are they moving at? How long are they at those tempos for? Now when I clap, I want you to drop one limb and add another. So one of those limbs is still the same, but now you add a different one. So now you're still working with those two. Drop the older limb and add another one. Still working with two limbs, but these should be two completely different limbs than you started with. Bring these two limbs to space. We're just focusing on two of our limbs. And now we're talking a little bit about space now. We have these elements of time, tempo, duration, reactivity, repetition, copying what people are doing. But now we have height that we're playing with, elevation. And two limbs that we are moving through space. Now I want you to drop one and add another. Now, keep working. When I clap, I want you to work with all six of your limbs. Thinking of different ways of utilizing all six. Maybe focusing on certain limbs at certain times. Maybe highlighting certain limbs for another. But we're kind of going through our six limbs and figuring out how we move them through time. Okay? Here we go. Now I'm giving you all six of your limbs. Arms, legs, head, tailbone. How high are they? How low are they? What time are they at? Are they at a zero, one, a five, or an eight? How long are you moving them that tempo for? Always go back over that checklist. Good. Keep where you're at. So now we're going to think a little bit about something we've already been doing, which is creating shapes. Really, movement is actually just shapes going through time. And that's what we've been doing. We've been taking shapes through time. But now I want us to slow down a little bit as we're thinking more about space. And I want us to think just about the shape that our bodies are in. I want us to keep thinking about our six limbs, but I, I kind of want us to not think about movement as much. I want us to think about going from a shape and getting ourselves into another shape. And however form you want to do that with all your other tools, but now we're focusing less on the movement piece of the puzzle and more of the shape piece of the puzzle, okay? So when I clap, go ahead and you can keep working.
how do you get from one shape to another shape? What tools are you using to get from one shape to another? you to your attention. We're working in individual lanes. We have a lot of people in here working with us. This is our ensemble. Work with your ensemble. React to them. That's what a part of all, what all this is about, is learning how to use our bodies intuitively and in a reactive manner. So open yourself up to your, to your classmates, you know? Um, we're an ensemble here. Just because we're not, you know, just because we're in our own lanes doesn't mean we have to be isolated. React, you can react. How are we feeling? Cool. Those are the basic tools that we're going to be working with for now. Okay. Um, that, those are the basic tools I want to work with for now. Is all, is everything we just talked about? You know, feel free to you know sit, stand, jump, lay on the ground. Everything you were just doing. Um, thinking about our tempos. Z, always keep it zero, one, five, and eight. Um, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, it's all about getting out of our head, and so I don't want to talk too much about it because then I'm going to make us overthink. So what I'm going to have us do next is we're going to do what's called an open viewpoint, okay? Which is kind of what you've been doing. Um, what this is, um, normally, in a normal circumstance, you would all be kind of doing this in the same space, you know? Um, I want you to still have that feeling of working with one another that we are an ensemble, don't let yourself, don't let the isolation of the lanes prevent you from working with one another, taking things from one another, reacting to one another, okay? So what we're gonna do is called an open viewpoints, which is just a completely open-ended improvisational exercise where you utilize the tools I've given you, those tempos, walking through space, et cetera, et cetera, and we're just gonna have a little open-ended scene, okay? So I'm gonna give you one other tool though, the tool I'm going to give you um, is called SATS. It's a German word. I don't actually really know where, I came, where this comes from. This is just how it was taught to me. Um, what I'm going to allow you to do is you have a blank space at the very upstage portion here against the curtain. You are not in the scene when you are back here, OK? But you should still be focused and at attention, and you can bring yourself into the scene or take yourself out of the scene whenever you want. Because that's also an important tool, is knowing when you can lend to a scene and knowing when you need to step back and let your ensemble do something, okay? So we're all gonna start back here. And as soon as one of you is ready, you can begin your open viewpoints exploration. And scene lights up.
I'd like you to come to an end of your scene in one minute. So, okay, so I always like to take this moment. Um, so we just saw them interacting with each other, playing a little bit, okay? What was your audience response to anything that you saw? Was there any, were there any moments that you thought, oh, that was an interesting, I saw some actors working together in an interesting way. Were there anything, any moments that stood out to you? Any moments where you, you thought something was gonna happen and then it didn't and you were like, ah, oh, man, I wish that would have happened. Any moments that you saw? Yeah. Of a, like Ryan started out doing this kind of like like war fight like challenge thing, and then Krista kind of came out and they were sort of like it, almost like they were challenging or daring each other. And I was like, oh, this is okay. And then for a minute, there was like teams were sometimes building, and then they weren't, which I thought was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I also know what I felt like was that Caleb had a, a couple of things that, like a set of motion that he was trying to get other people to like get on board with, and then every so often someone would join him and someone wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was watching. I was like, how long will it take before they all start doing the same thing and they never did? Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? Anything? Yeah. Uh, Krista and Christina a few times had kind of like conversations with their bodies. Um, I don't quite know what was being said. I think that's the point. But it looked like very everything was flowing, and it was very clear that they were like responding to each other in some way. And so it was really cool. I could see physically like one of you would give and the other would take, and then vice versa. Yeah. Sure. Any other responses? Yeah, we have natural emotion, emotional reactions to just bodily movement. Right? Um, a lot of people, especially in the United States, come to acting from the perspective of it's sort of an interior thing and you have to feel the right way and that's what leads you into doing something. Right? A lot of people attribute that to kind of Stanislavski, right? In fact, Stanislavski, toward the end of his career, actually kind of started questioning that notion as he started getting into yogi practices and, and Stanislavski himself started to, to think about how really the way humans act naturally is we don't think too much. Most of what we do as humans is reactive. When you're walking down the street, you're not thinking about walking down the sidewalk. You're just intuitively doing it. And actually, toward the end of Stanislavski's career, that's what he was trying to get actors to do. Unfortunately, that book never got published in English. <laughs> so we don't really talk about that. But actually, I say that just to say that this method is not so far flung from some of the methods that are closer to home within the sort of American style of acting tradition, right? It's to try to get us, so it's, it's not that this stuff is, you don't have to be doing hyper stylized acting styles. You don't have to be a Greek chorus out there doing this, you know, to, for this to be interesting. Because the point of what we're doing is trying to get our bodies to react intuitively to one another. But also understanding what our bodies are. That's the thing is that, is that sometimes we, want, we kind of react intuitively perhaps, but we're not, we don't understand the full potential of our body in, in that sort of reactive process. Does that make sense? And so that's kind of what we're trying to do here is get our bodies, our whole bodies, what are they and how can, the whole, can, how can we react intuitively with the body, right? The whole body. That's kind of the idea. Um, what time are we at? I think we're getting pretty close, aren't we? We have 1100. Yeah. Any other thoughts about what you just saw before I just kind of make a, yes, comment? When you, at, like before the music came in, I felt like we were unsure of what to do, but then when the music came in, it really helped us like do something with it our It was a clear shift. Yeah. 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 
There's all, yeah, that, there's always a clear shift when the music comes in for sure. Now the challenge with that is that the music, when you do this enough, the music has to be thought of as just another tool. Sometimes you want to use it, sometimes you don't, you know. If you had this training enough, you'd start to feel that after a while. When we direct a show, like oftentimes at Kansas City Public Theater, when we direct shows, we spend the first week of rehearsal just doing exercises like this. We don't even touch the script oftentimes for the entire first week of rehearsal. But then guess what? When we come in with that script at week two, we never have to tell our actors what their blocking is. We just have to say, hey, I'd like you to get that direction, please. But we've done this kind of stuff for an entire week. And then our actors just, and it gets us in our bodies thinking. So uh, exit. Yeah, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was just gonna throw in there that um, it, the ensemble work really helps a lot because it's more than like oftentimes, especially when we're just beginning as actors, um, you're told where to go stand. You're told how to drink your water. Um, but once you get into the professional realm, you're, you're obviously your training's not over, but you're expected to be able to do that on your own. And so their ideas and the ideas that come from the exercises like this are so much better than anything if one person is just like, you need to do this. We work collectively, um, and the director, of course, is watching the story, like our audience members, um, and making sure that the story, we're telling the correct story together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and which is why like, we kept highlighting like, the ensemble, right? The ensemble as well, yeah. Um, so one thing I'll, I'll just say that I noticed, which it, this happens, I've never had a time that this didn't happen the first time the people I was introducing this to started. The moment, I, the very first open viewpoints exercise we ever do, it's very busy. There's always something happening. And, and we kind of feel like we have to fill space all the time. Did we feel that? There were a couple of moments, there were a couple moments where like three people were off stage and two people were going off stage and I just wanted that moment of stillness. But then the moment those people stepped off stage, somebody was right back on doing something. And so, that's, and, and so that's the other thing, as, as you sort of develop in this training, you know, theoretically, if you were to continue training like this, that's really just a good note, a good actor note in general, is we, all, we, we often feel like we always have to be doing something, right? And, and in fact, sometimes less is more. Sometimes, you know, sometimes just walking through that space is just a lot more effective than, you know, me doing whatever I do in the mic. <laughs> I caught it. Does that make sense? You don't, we don't always have to feel like we're doing something or one-upping another, right? Um, that happens every single time we do this for the first time, though, because, we, because I, I just gave you all these tools and said you could do whatever you want. <laughs> so why not use them, right? Happens every time. You all did really great, though. So really, uh, yeah. Um, I, think, I think that's all, all we have. Yeah, I thought we'd take a, a, take a few moments to maybe do some, like maybe talk about what you just did. Um, I think it's always kind of good to come down off of a training session with just a brief conversation with those who participated and, and certainly those who were out here as well and most of you participated as well actually. So I, I think I'd like to just wrap up by having a little conversation with everybody just to talk about questions you have, just reflecting on our experience. It's always good to come down after especially doing a pretty rigorous training like this, your legs are probably hurting and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, let, let's just sit down. Let's just, come on, let's just sit down. I have kind of a silly question while yeah. you're like sitting and thinking. Um, I, I know that like so much of this is about forward movement. And I had a director when I was in high school who would always say, go back up, it shows that you're weak. And like, don't go mm -hmm. backwards. And I almost asked this to let it just play out. Like, when you're doing all, there's so much of like this forward movement. Does this also work backwards? I know that sounds really silly. It, to it totally does. When, we, when we're doing this, um, usually backwards is always an option. Okay. Just because everything has, uh, it, all forms of movement are an option. With, with the way the lanes are set up now, it, I think it just kind of naturally lends itself to forwardness. But yeah, typically backwards is all, backwards, side to side, whatever is always an option as well. And even some of those Suzuki exercises, sometimes we do those backwards. Like, yeah, sometimes, sometimes uh, 
we'll do like a good one, two, slide it back that way. Yeah. So, how are you all feeling? Great. Yeah? <laughs> Exhausted? Yeah, you all put in a lot of work, for sure. Um, I'm just curious if you have any initial, I'm very open-ended question. Do you have any initial thoughts, like comments, like about what you just did? Are you wondering why the heck did we just do that for two hours? I was really tired of, not tired, um, I didn't want to be on my feet anymore. Not because they hurt or anything like that. It was just like, I don't want to be on my feet anymore. Uh -huh. But like, I can't walk on my hands. And like, I don't want to put my head on this hard ass floor. Like, I don't want to do that. Uh -huh. So I was like, I'm going to do like whatever I can to like prevent my feet being on the floor for like a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Because like everyone's feet was on the floor. Like I don't want to be that guy where like I'm just dragging my feet across the floor the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I kept like thinking of different things that like I could do to like keep myself from doing the exact same thing over and over again. Because mm -hmm. I did not want to fall into a pattern. Yeah. Because I didn't really feel like that was the point. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's the biggest trick in this. Is you used a key word which is that you were trying to think about what to do. Yes. And that's the thing that we're trying to overcome, mm -hmm. right? Is, is, is thinking about what to do. Um, it's really hard to do that when you're doing, when you're first learning this, because I'm constantly shouting directions at you, making you think about the new things I'm shouting at you, right? But that is the, the goal, is this idea of thinking about what to do. We're trying to get out of that mindset so that we, so we're not thinking about anything, we're just kind of doing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Totally natural reaction to have the first time doing this, though it happens almost with everybody, and even with us. Like we, you all, you, those little thoughts come in sometimes. You just gotta. What I do, and this is a really good thing for anybody on stage. When you find yourself thinking about something, put that attention not on yourself, but on your partner. Get out of yourself and focus radically on your ensemble and your partner. The more you're, you know, even what I'll do is I'll be like. Um, Red shirt, KC, Chiefs, red. Maybe I'll just keep saying red again, I don't know. But I'll just like pick out these weird little details. Just the moment I notice myself getting into my head, I just radically focus on my partner and just like, just so that I'm out of my head and then I'm just, I'm just being utterly reactive because I'm just putting all that attention on them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And that's not just in viewpoints. I mean, again, this is all stuff that we, we do this because these exercises can be kind of translated to pretty much all styles of theater, we think. And so if you're just on stage with an acting partner, give, putting your attention on them rather than yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, the whole part where we had to like uh, bring in like all of that, like the conflict and then like ease down from it or whatever, I felt like that was like very, very difficult. That was probably the hardest part of this entire thing and like learning to like control our breathing. So the, the, yeah. the first exercise that we did, and then the like, stomping, um, yeah. The, there are like the parts where like it was all supposed to be um, things that just came to us or um, were evocative of our movement. Um, those were easier than moments when we actually had to like think back to something we were supposed to be memorized on after mm -hmm. doing something rigorous and distracting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was just some notes that I had on myself. Yeah. I mean, the physical demands, especially that first exercise we did, are certainly going from that three minutes of stomping, which by itself is difficult, but then having to rein it in to control your breath and your body to do that slow movement. Yeah, that's especially difficult. Yeah. And I was like, I could have just. <laughs> uh huh. I don't think anyone really stopped. I mean, the only thing stopped was And it's good that you can feel that and reflect on it afterwards, too, which is why we have these little chats afterwards, because it's really here that we often tend to reflect on like what we just did as performers and, and whatnot. Yeah, any other thoughts or questions?
Mm -hmm. I'm glad. I'm glad you had that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? I noticed that at first I was thinking a lot, mostly just about like, oh my gosh, my body is shaking right now. Uh, and <laughs> I'm just squatting, you know? Uh -huh. um, but then, like, as we started going and my body got tired, my mind relaxed as well. And so then mm -hmm. I didn't have to, like, I wasn't so in my head about anything. I was just like, okay. And then eventually my body stopped being tired because I was so euphoric in my brain. <laughs> so, and then, and then uh, I started listening to my body with my breath. So, like, if I was going fast, I was like, oh, I'm running out of breath. Like, I should slow down. Uh, mm -hmm. So then I did. And I was like, this is nice. That's the terrific thing about open viewpoints is when that something like that happens, you can just do something different. <laughs> you know, um, it's really great. Um, and yeah, that's a good example of what you were just talking about. It's a good example of really how our body, how just through the movement of our body, like we intuit things, right? Like as you were more physically worn down, you kind of quit thinking about it, which is honestly a little bit about these. That's a honestly kind of a part of these exercises as well as there is a specific part of it that's meant to kind of just physically wear us down a little bit because that's when we start to actually act naturally, right? Yeah. Oh, um, okay, I just remembered, sorry, I don't want to open the clock again. Um, so when we were doing the parts with like the different tempos, the one, five, eight, or zero, five, one, five, eight, um, I felt like even though before like we started looking at each other, just hearing the beats in the room, like we kind of like could interact. And like I started to like interact with like the crowd that was from me as well. Like you know, feed off of them or like give them something or mm -hmm. like, you know, create some sort of scenario, if not just the scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it I felt, felt it kind of felt like wrestling. Like, so I was a wrestler, and like, when you get like ridiculously exhausted on the mat, you don't really think about anything else other than like standard like technique to not get your ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> so like, doing this, like, I didn't. I never really got tired, but like, I would get into positions where my body would be like, okay, time to switch it up, mm -hmm. and then I would focus on like those things that people were talking about. Tempo, duration, speed, and you know, all, all those like which limb was doing what. Mm -hmm. And I started to focus on like the fundamental techniques of like what I can do instead of like, oh, I'm supposed to, you know, get this fucking epiphany. Like, right. no, I was like, just do the damn thing right. so that well, we can finish. And that's a really good example of how we find this very useful as theater practitioners as well. Because, at least personally, one thing I don't find useful, and Anne Bogart in many of her books talks about this. One thing that I know we don't personally find terribly useful as directors is telling an actor, walk off angry. Mm -hmm. That's such an, a subjective thing. How do you, you know, tell somebody to, to be angry? This is a very subjective emotional thing and it, it's not very repeatable. And as theater performers, you have to be able, or even if you're doing film and you're doing take after take, you have to be able to repeat what you are doing, right? So I can say, storm off angry, or I can say, storm off at an eight, right? That's something that's a little bit more measurable and a little bit more, it's something that I can go back to with consistency when we're working with actors, right? Um, you're giving notes for sure. Mm -hmm. You have the, the vocabulary, the shared vocabulary, and you can be like, I want you to explore space more, I want you to explore elevation. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a really good vocabulary of movement that we can use, not just when, again, not just when we're doing like super experimental stuff. It could be like, you know, as realistic as they come. It could be like a checkoff play. I mean, I gave you a, I gave you a check. I thought that was Strindberg. Strindberg, yeah. Um, hyper naturalism, you know? I mean. So yeah, I guess all that to say that like, yeah, as actors, you know, having that toolbox is often more useful than diving into 
some sort of more subjective emotions that really can't be repeated on stage, right? Not every director is going to work that way necessarily. Um, certainly mo a lot more theater directors are going to work that way than film directors. Um, but, yeah. Um, what time are we at? Are we about done? 9.05. 9.05. We've gone five minutes over. <laughs> so thank you all so much for being here. Um, if you're interested in anything, in, in learning anything else, or if you're interested in like the theater or something, you can always just like email. Our email is like on the theater's website, our, our company email. Always feel free. I mean, we came here to, you know, offer advice and, and, and teach people about like the professional world of theater and stuff like that. So uh, feel free to shoot us uh, an email if you ever need it, if you're looking for some advice, if you ever uh, need anything. Um, we can answer anything.